<laughs> so, um, uh, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, my name is uh, Johannes von Boreas. Um, I'm from UVC Partners, and um, we are an early stage investor in uh, climate tech, software, and mobility. And today, I would like to talk about sustainable mobility Thank with uh, great founders of Lilium, Daniel, and uh, Max of Finauto. And uh, just imagine, I mean, we are all traveling a lot, but wouldn't it be great to really have no CO2 emissions if we either fly or drive a car or go on a journey? I mean, wouldn't it be great to really travel without feeling guilty? And we all know electrification is part of the solution. We have electric cars, but the adoption is really lacking behind. We know that in, in Germany already, the goal um, uh, to achieve a lot of electric cars on the streets is a little bit behind. And even electric air travel is a lot more difficult. So now let's have a deep dive on these two topics. With again, this is Max, the founder and CEO of Finauto, and the founder of Lilium, Daniel. Please. Yeah, thank you, Johannes. Um, good afternoon. Yes, we are in aviation, and that's probably the hardest sector to make it sustainable, but it can be done. We make battery electric uh, passenger jet airplanes. Uh, we want to make regional aviation sustainable, more accessible, and, and lower in cost. And what we can do with this basically is achieve a high speed transportation system that is as environmentally friendly as a high speed train but we can avoid the double-digit billions in infrastructure investments on the ground and have a very flexible connection between different cities. Lilium is Europe's largest electric aviation company with around 900 employees, 1.4 billion in funding. Uh, we are based in Munich, uh, eight years old, and a NASDAQ-listed company. Um, this is our first product. Uh, it's a vertical takeoff and landing electric jet with six passengers. You can take off and land on any infrastructure similar to a helicopter pad. You can charge it uh, with an automotive supercharger and it will fly at 250 kilometers per hour like a high speed train. Fully electric, emissions free, and it is being certified at the same safety level like a commercial airliner um, here from the European uh, aviation Safety Agency. These airplanes are also very low noise uh, in their emissions, much less noisy than classic um, aircraft, and that means you can also fly closer into the urban environments. Well, speaking about certification, a couple of years back we realized that if we want to bring a passenger aircraft on the market at the same safety and quality levels like an airliner, we'll have to have people who have done that before. So I'm very proud about our team. We have the former CEO of Airbus being our chairman, the former program manager of the Airbus A320, which is the most successful commercial airliner, is our CEO since last year. And I could go on like this with the head of engineering from Rolls-Royce and, and so on. But what also matters is, of course, strong investors as partners and strong suppliers. We have the full supply chain for the aircraft closed by now. And I am proud that we have the who is who of the aerospace supply chain in the program because it's a validation for us. They are investing, they make their own due diligence about the case, and they know best, uh, probably, compared to, to everybody else out there. And I think it's also a great testament that this industry believes in electric aviation and is investing and supporting that. So here's the exciting part. Uh, we've done four years of flight testing with full-size aircraft. What you see here is our is flight test center in Spain, where uh, you can basically hour. see how the aircraft Oops, works. So um, at the takeoff, all the engines are pointing down. Then it lifts off vertically, like now. Then the engines are tilting, propel the aircraft forward, and as it picks up speed, it becomes a normal Climbing. airplane. So when it's in high-speed flight, it makes all the lift with its wings, and it's actually knots. even more efficient than a classic airliner uh, in forward flight, like you can see now. And then for the landing, uh, you basically do the same Check thing backwards. The engine Check. go into a vertical position. The aircraft lands uh, on the spot. And this is how we believe we will travel in the future and save you a lot of time.
So our business model, we have about 750 pre-orders and uh, we're a classic OEM selling the airplanes, but actually we make the same amount of revenue with the aftermarket services because you can uh, upgrade and replace the batteries in the aircraft without actually changing the airframe and that means it's a bit similar to the printer cartridges, um, a very balanced um, business model. We're delivering the first aircraft in 2026 and we had a very exciting milestone last week uh, because we started production at our uh, facilities in Munich for the certification airplane. Thank you. Now, uh, from my side, it's going to be a lot less futuristic and it's, I think, very hard to follow to see kind of like what uh, um, companies are doing these days uh, with uh, kind of like venture capital in the probably most truest and original sense, like really investing into um, fixed cost products and being able to scale that. That's, that's really, really cool. What we are doing at Finn is basically moving uh, one of the largest and unregulated consumer markets to the online world. So when you, whenever you get a car nowadays, typically what you, uh, what you get is an offline experience that is filled with multiple stakeholders, with a lot of complexity and also with intransparent costs and hassle. What we are doing at Finn is we are moving that transaction online. Uh, on Finn.com, you can see more than 300 configurations that are readily available. You can book your subscription in less than three minutes. Uh, the record actually is less than two minutes. Uh, you get the car delivered to your doorstep, and with that comes a six or 12 month subscription that you can renew after these six or 12 months or where you can get a new car or um, choose to do something different. Uh, with everything included, included but the charging and the fuel. And you might wonder, kind of like, why, why is this car salesman standing on the sustainability stage? Um, we are investing quite heavily into making sure that this is the most sustainable option out there for consumers. A lot of us live in urban centers, uh, probably don't need a car to commute every day. Um, but the area where I grew up in, uh, in, in rural Bavaria, the reality is a lot different. You need a car to bring your kids to school. You need a car uh, to, get, to get from A to B to commute to work. And what we want to make sure is that we really provide a more sustainable alternative. On the one hand side, by making the entry barrier into electric mobility as low as possible. So it is really a, you are mitigating the residual value risk, the technology risk, but also um, the range anxiety that you have by having the longest test drive of your life. And also, we compensate all the CO2 emissions that are not only caused during the driving of the car, but also during the production. And with that, we are able to actually get a 40% share on low emission vehicles, which is something that we are quite proud of, where we are accelerating that shift to sustainable mobility. And People really, really like that product. Um, so ultimately, over the past uh, three years, we have been growing uh, quite drastically. We grew from roughly uh, a partnership with three OEMs to a partnership with more than 30 of the leading automotive manufacturers, and we're able to uh, scale from 4 million in annual recurring subscription revenues to more than 160 by now. Also in two markets, so not only in Germany anymore, but also 10% of our revenue is coming now from the United States. Uh, in the previous uh, presentation, there was one, uh, one question around kind of like being, being purpose-led versus being mission-led. And uh, it's funny that I have the slide uh, in there as well, because it's something that is very, very dear to us, where we asked ourselves from the beginning, how can we make sure that when we work in an um, industry, in a space that is so typically associated with, uh, with carbon emissions, how can we make sure that we actually make that more sustainable? And for us, the answer was to be more purpose-driven and to make sure that we not only incorporate uh, society into that purpose to drive change for people, organizations, but also the planet um, through frictionless mobility. Cool.
So thank you very much. Uh, very impressive, um, Max. And I start with a question. We saw this incredible growth story. <laughs> um, now uh, um, you have founded, uh, co-founded Finn uh, four and a half years ago. Uh, uh, you're the CEO and founder. Um, how does it feel now to be in a 160 million company compared to four years ago where you're only a few people? Yeah, I it's definitely a huge difference. Like if, you, like if you think about the early days where you basically uh, call every customer yourself, do the car d d deliver the cars yourselves on the weekends because there was just nobody else available to do so and now have like uh, 350 incredibly talented people that are working on this. It's, it's truly a, a huge change. Uh, but I think what has stayed exactly the same is this kind of like the drive that we see at the company. And so I'm really enjoying going every day to work and kind of like see uh, how, how hard people work to kind of like move us forward. Great, great. Thank you. And uh, you have mentioned it. Um, you had very strong growth in Germany, yeah. uh, actually really from the start on. Then you decided early on to go to the US. Yeah. Um, can you explain a little bit why and maybe also your learnings? Yeah, uh, th that definitely was a 2021 decision. Uh, so uh, definitely in a time also where there was uh, a lot more capital available. But we, like oftentimes, if you're a startup in Europe, you look across the Atlantic and you see that behemoth that is like 10 times your size, that is better run, better managed. And we didn't see that. And so for us, it was a really, really cool opportunity to kind of like build from Germany a company that is su successful globally. Yeah, very good. No, great, thank you very much. And I think there's very good news coming up uh, in <laughs> the next uh, few weeks, so uh, stay tuned. Um, Daniel, maybe turn to you. Also very impressive what you built up. I remember, let's say, seven years ago, we met with the first prototype uh, in the makerspace. We were, I think, printing some of the parts. And we really said, uh, wow, he wants to build an electric airplane. I mean, this is really a job. And now you are with more than 800 people, 850 people. And when can I fly? with this airplane? Yeah, so as I mentioned, we had uh, last week started production of the first of seven certification aircraft. Uh, it will probably take half a year to, to get the first one out. Then there'll be a bit of ground testing for the airplane. And towards the end of next year, we will start the manned flight test campaign for certification. And then in 26, we will deliver the first airplanes to our customers in early 26. And these customers will be? These customers are a mix between, on the one hand, premium customers where we're replacing executive helicopters and, and business jet flights, um, which are the most emission intense uh, types of flight. And on the other side, which is the bigger market, um, customers like airlines, Lufthansa, etc., who are using these airplanes as feeder flights uh, for their long range and, and mid range aircraft. Okay, great. So we have seen the technology works, right? It's uh, not manned yet, but it is flying. Um, but as you say, you still need uh, the time for certification. How do you finance this now phase until you finally sell the product? That is actually the most interesting question probably with a company like us, because we have two and a half years maybe to go, and we're burning 250, 270 million per year. So that would be 800 million or so. And the good news is that in aerospace, it's standard that you have pre-delivery payments. For Airbus, about 60%, Boeing, 70%. And out of those 750 pre-orders, we have many binding contracts already, uh, where we actually achieved a 50% um, down payment before the aircraft gets delivered. This started this year and will continue a lot next year. And our expectation is that roughly by the end of next year, we can largely finance the company through these uh, customer revenues. And for me as a founder, that's the most exciting piece, uh, that you actually have a customer who is excited and, and who, is, uh, who is paying for your product. And at the same time, with the interest rates right now, it, it, was, the, it was the best and maybe only solution for us to go. Yeah, very good. So, and uh, you mentioned uh, you're on the public market, so uh, you, we can see what's happening with your company. Maybe two last words from both of you. Wh when, uh, Max, when will we hit 50% usage in EV cars? Um, for Finn, probably by 2025. Uh, for the overall market, I think it will take us a little bit longer than expected uh, after 2030. Right. And uh, when will we be flying electric in, in Europe? What is the vision of electric flying? 
Well, for the first ones, of course, 26, but we are at the moment the only company globally having an electric jet aircraft in commercial certification. And we have the team, we have the supply chain, the technology underneath. And our plan is to then use that technology and develop larger regional uh, commercial airliners. And for these ones, I guess it will be maybe 33, something like this, until you can do the first flight from Zurich to London or so um, in a 50, 70 seated electric airliner. And, and that's our purpose and that's what, what gets me incredibly excited um, every day. Great, thank you very much. Thank you.